Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites? Apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm your host, Seek, and I am here with, once again, Ben Pronsky, who is nice enough to take time out of multiple days of his schedule, which was really awesome, uh, because I planned to do all this at once, and he was like, hey man, let's let's take our time, you know, and we'll have fun with it, and I really appreciate you doing that, Ben. So, Ben, the voice of Venom on the current Maximum Venom cartoon, hello, sir, welcome to the show again. Hey, Seek, good to talk to you again. Absolutely, man. And uh, today, so in the last episode, we kind of just had a general discussion about Venom, what you know, what you liked about him. I interjected some things I liked, and and we kind of had a back and forth. And I thought that was really fun. So in this one, I kind of want my you know audience and the viewers and everyone out there to kind of get to know a little bit more about you on your you know on your uh, your your career, I guess. Like you know, the last one we talked for fun, but in this one, it's about who you are, uh, how you got into voice acting, you know, kind of where your background is, and what led you to the role of Venom. So uh, so today, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. So again, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Sure. So, all right. We'll start out with, because I did a little bit of digging, because uh, I, I like to, to learn, you know, I, I do deep digs whenever I do interviews. And, uh, and this one, I heard, found out about you. I thought it was so cool, because it ties into just history in general, which is that I read that you are a direct descendant from Augustus and John Allen, which are the Allen brothers, who founded Houston, Texas. So I kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of curious how that how that, you know, how your upbringing was and how that, you know, maybe got your parents, you know, you know, your interaction with them and how that led to acting. Like, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had performers on both sides of the family, both my mother and father's side. Um, you know, my biological uh, father's side was the uh, the Allen brothers. Um, and on uh, on both sides, there were performers. But my, like, my grandmother was a, a famous opera performer um, and stuff like that. So it's sort of you know, it's always sort of been like inherent. Um, and I was just that kid growing up that was, uh, you know, I just sort of gravitated, to, you know, towards the arts, uh, and specifically acting. And, you know, I grew up a theater kid, uh, in, in Houston, Texas. And, uh, you know, from the time that I was like little, little, I actually, <laughs> at my, at my eighth grade graduation, I got, uh, <laughs> they created these like awards, like most likely to do this, most likely, and I got most likely to do voiceovers at my eighth grade graduation, which is pretty insane. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, it was written uh, in the stars. Yeah, yeah. It was preordained for sure. <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, and speaking of that, because you know, I looked at and you had uh, this great history. Like uh, you know, your IMDb IMDb page is so full of you know, you've done stuff with commercials, you've done short films like Mine, which is something I saw and looked up. Um, you portrayed numerous characters in anime, cartoons, video games, including one of my favorites, which is Rodimus Prime. Um, I think you even worked with a friend of mine named Jamie Araclianus on on that series. I don't know if you ever got to meet him, but uh, yeah, he was he's a good friend of mine, and uh, and uh, you know, and I'm a former Lego employee too, so I'm a big fan of you. Lego Venom in the uh, Venom uh, Vex for Venom movie that you did, and we talked a little bit about that in yesterday's episode. So I, I guess I'm kind of curious, what draws you to a role, and is there a character that you'd love to portray one day that maybe you haven't portrayed yet? Oh man, you know, as far as like being drawn to a specific role, uh, you know, as an actor, we're lucky to have the opportunity just to audition, you know, and it's a, it's a long road. You know, it's not an easy profession to pursue. But as long as you, you know, you study, you do your work and you get to the point where you feel like you're ready to start pursuing it professionally, then, you know, you, you know, you, once your classes are done, then you start to pursue agency representation. And if you're lucky enough to get an agent and especially one of the top agents and one of the larger markets like Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, uh, something like that, then you start getting auditions. Now, when you get these auditions, that's where the fun begins. And that's really like 90% of our job as actors is auditioning. Um, and so, you know, as far as like being drawn to specific roles, you know, all of these auditions come with character specs, character information. And it's, it's cool to go through that. And that's what sort of informs your choices, uh, you know, both, both emotionally and vocally as a voice actor. So, um, you know, for Venom in particular, I love the duality of Eddie Brock and Venom. I love that, uh, 
you know, there was impetus for uh, both of them to uh, to try to, you know, have recognition and, uh, and, and be powerful. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, as far as characters that I'd love to portray, I mean, there's so many, man, but I'd say probably top of the list is, is Joker. I'd love to play Joker one day, uh, uh, which would be a blast, but yeah, it's a, it's a privilege just to have the opportunity to audition. So when you actually start, when you actually start working, uh, as a voice actor, that's, that it's, it really is just sort of, you know, it's the, it's the frosting on the cake. It's like, thank you so much for this. It's cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's great to hear that because one thing we try to do on the show is not only because we follow the Venom movies and the cartoon and stuff, but I like giving people a peek behind how things actually are done. So that's kind of why I phrased that question in that way because I actually know that you aren't really drawn to a role, that it is something that is an opportunity and it's something that you know most actors are grateful to get. And so I'm it's so glad to hear you say it just word for word how I envisioned the answer in my head because uh, uh, I lived I lived across a hall from a, a young lady named Erica Luttrell who was a, an actor as well and she does a lot of voice acting and, and she said the same thing. She was like, yeah, it's... Uh, it's just, you know, you, you would love to do all these roles. Like you said, there's a list of characters that will play like Joker and stuff, but uh, that's just not how the industry works. It's it's not like uh, you're like, hey, I'm drawn to this character, so I'm going to go pursue and play that character. It's it's just all about timing, opportunity, and, and, and you know, what what you're able to get auditions for. And, and you know, you mainly just people just working. You know, you have a job, and you go, and you just do the best you can at your job, and that's great. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, it's a, uh, that's a good point. The when I first booked the role of Venom, I mean, it was, it was very different than how it ended up, uh, like in those first few episodes, uh, of season two, you know, Dead Man's Party and, um, uh, and the second episode, because, uh, you know, you massage it, you work through it, you work with the director, you work with the, you know, the Marvel team, um, and they sort of like help guide you. You know, I was lucky Colette Sunderman was the casting director for this. And, you know, I'd worked with her before I'd taken classes with her before and, she knew that I had a, a broad enough range vocally that I could play both Eddie Brock and Venom, um, and sort of like have that creature element in my in, in the vocal quality. But you know, it, it wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the opportunity to audition for it in the first place. You know, so um, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, but yeah, it's it, it's come a long way. And those first few episodes that I did, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, vocally, I was thrashed. <laughs> after those first couple of episodes because it is vocally challenging to sustain. But then once you figure out vocal placement and breath support and all that kind of stuff, then you can, you know, it becomes easier. It's just, it's just like playing an instrument, really. You know, you learn how to uh, how to play the, the trumpet better, you know, over time. So, uh, anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I mean, exactly. And, and, uh, and I'll dive more into that here in a minute. But I guess, so just to backtrack a little, because you were talking about getting the role of Eddie Brock and stuff and, and Venom in the show. So how did that come about? Was that just like every other job? It was like a, an opportunity came through your agent or, or something like that. And, and how did, how did that, uh, you know, door open for you? And then how excited were you when you found out you got the role? Yeah. I mean, man, uh, yeah, it was, it was an audition, uh, just like, uh, all, all the other auditions or the other gigs that I've booked over the years, um, that come in. Uh, you know, there are plenty of people that just get offered roles, um, you know, but you, you, most of us have to audition for these. And even some of the top vocal talent in the industry still have to audition for these things. But yeah, I, 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 uh, I got the call back after the audition um, and Colette had a couple of notes, um, you know, about things. And, and I, you know, I took her feedback in mind. And then um, after, the, after the call back, I got the call from my agent uh, at the time, Dean, or he's still my agent, Dean Panero. And he was like, you, you booked Venom, man. You, <laughs> you did it. And, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, just pure elation, man. It really was, it was a very surreal moment. Cause you know, I'd, I'd done, I've done a lot of work before, but to, to book a role like this, to book one of the most iconic villains in Marvel, you know, history is like, it's a, it was a dream come true for sure. So, yeah, yeah. I tried to play it cool over the phone with Dean. I was like, oh, oh, this is great. Okay, cool. So when's the first session and blah, 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 blah. And then we hung up and I was just, just, in, uh, just freaking out. Just totally freaking out. You're just doing katas in your house. 
Uh, you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that's what I was just going to ask was when you got it, were you like, did you have to play it cool? Were you like, oh yeah, no, cool, man. Yeah, that's great. I, you know, I, I crushed it in there. Awesome. And you keep it all light. And then, yeah, that's funny that. You... Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was more, I mean, the true nerves were that first session because, you know, in, in a lot of these, you actually go in and you're, uh, you're in a, a group record with other people. And I was so nervous because it was my first time on a Marvel project. And, you know, I was in there with, you know, Laura Bailey and Robbie Damon and, uh, you know, the great Fred Tattashore. Oh. And we were in this group record together. And that was that was really, really intimidating, uh, knowing that I was going to be with, like, some of the best of the biz. Um, so that first day, oh, man, I mean, I was just nerve-wracked. Um, but... You know, you get into this place where you're like, this is a, this is, um, this is about performance. This is about my interpretation of the material that they've given me, and hopefully, you know, they dig what it is that I'm doing. You know, and that's all that you can really, uh, that's all you can really do is just uh, bring the best of yourself to it. You know. Absolutely, and and I, I feel like you are like uh, the last point I'll touch on here before we we end today's episode is is the fact that the voice that you do for both characters for Eddie and Venom because you know portraying Eddie and Venom obviously comes with a duality I think uh, a lot of times people when they think of the role they just go oh it's just a monster voice for one and it's a human voice for another but there actually is more to it because it like I said it has to have duality but there also has to be a unity in it so I'm I'm kind of curious what your approach to capturing that was in your performance, like from, from your point of view, because uh, I have someone I'd love to compare you to, but I, I want to hear kind of kind of your your take on it first. <laughs> well, you know, playing Eddie was just like a slight variation of my own voice. You know, he's obviously just an incredibly better human being. You know, he's been beaten down so much in his life and, you know, feels like he's always, you know, just gets dealt a bad hand all the time, just, uh, so it was just a slightly more uh, downtrodden, you know, frustrated, aggressive version of my own, my own vocal quality or whatever. And you just have to think about like every single uh, character's intent. You know, what is his intention? Uh, you know, and his intention was, you know, to, to try to sell these photographs, to try to make a, a living for himself. You know, and at, at every single pass, uh, it wasn't happening for him. So as far as that, you've got to come from the place of intention. And what his relationships are, and all that kind of stuff. So, but then with Venom, um, there was a creature quality to it, and you know, so all you really, you know, as far as creature quality characters, you've got to make sure that you're playing locally as much as you can. So, when I was auditioning and when I had the callback, that was something that you've got to just sort of play vocally with it. And you know, you think to yourself, like, um, I don't know if you saw the Marvel uh, behind the scenes video of how to do the voice of Venom, but. Uh, you know, like I played with uh, different uh, uh, animal sounds, and you know, I did like a this, uh, like I came to a cow, or I was like, Murr! but then you add the texture, and it's like, Murr! and then you add the like aggression to it, and it becomes, um, uh, you know. So, and then there's also like I'm I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and uh, you know, when I when I read that he is, uh, you know, a big hulking, uh, slimy <laughs> creature one of the first things that came to mind was like Jabba the Hutt. So I started doing like, you know, and you start doing like this Jabba the Hutt, play with that a little bit, add some aggression to it. And it's a pretty similar quality uh, to what, uh, what it ended up being with them. So yeah, it's, it was fun. It's a lot of it is just playing with your, with your vocal quality. You know? Yeah. That's, and that's amazing. And I know for a fact that that's not easy to do because, uh, so what I was going to compare it to, so I'm a big fan of music, and I used to be in choir, and I used to do a lot of stuff with my voice at a young age that I cannot do now because it would literally kill me. Uh, and uh, and w But one thing I noticed is like about that duality is um, one singer that I can think of that was a young singer who unfortunately did pass a couple years ago, but uh, Chester Bennington of Linkin Park, um, I used to always hear in his voice, like when he would sing and hit these notes, it sounded like two people singing uh there's there, there literally sounded like a duality that the way he could split his vocals in certain ways and uh and his in his you know other band members would speak to that too so i remember watching that video that you just said and i'll put a link people listening later if you haven't seen it i'll put a link in the description box of ben doing the voice of venom that marvel hq put up on their channel it's really great to kind of see behind the scenes and see ben develop this character and, and bring you know what he's saying right now to the character 
But I hear that. Like, I hear that duality in there when you're Venom. Like, I, it, it sounds like somewhere deep in there that there's a human trying to speak with, you know, at the same time as the monster. And uh, it's it's wonderful, man. I, I, and I know that's not easy on your throat. So, yeah, when you say you started off in the audition and it was hard for you and you, you had to gasp for you – you had to work out, you know, your breathing techniques while you do it and then develop it over time, I mean – I know that's not easy to do, so uh, so I just wanted to say I, I commend you for that. It's amazing. Thanks, man. You know I appreciate that. You, you know you look back at some of the other uh, the other voice actors who have portrayed this character. You know people like Ben Diskin. You know mm-hmm. it's, it's in Spectacular. You know for that version, you know the production team decided to add more of that human quality in the voice, so you can hear much more of Ben Diskin in it. Right. Um, versus you know we I think that the writers and producers knew that. Uh, you know, at some point the symbiote was going to separate from Eddie Brock, and so they wanted to have much more of that animalistic, you know, creature quality to it. Because when he does separate himself from Eddie, it still has venom there, you know, right. as opposed to just that more of that human quality. So they wanted to focus more on that with the storyline, you know. That man, that makes sense, and and then that is something we'll get into in the next episode when I have you back, because I do want to talk about that. The fact that the suit does, and that's and that speaks a lot to the 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 natural history of the character too. But we'll get into that in the next episode where the suit still has a voice, you know, apart from Eddie and apart from a host, and uh, and and I want to dive into that, but I want to do it in the next episode because I think it's really fascinating <laughs> stuff, and I don't want to take up too much more of your time today. So Ben, I, dude, I can't thank you enough, and I, I you know I'm glad we were able to give a window into you know what it means to be a voice actor and to be an actor and in, in in your line of work and to and to what you have to go through to br- you know bring characters to life it's it's not easy it is hard work and i'm glad we were able to share that today with the audience i mean i'm happy to do it really uh you know i appreciate it it, it means a lot uh the messages that i'm getting from you know venom fans uh you know some some are nice and some you know aren't crazy about it but that's cool i mean it's uh you know all of this is we got to take it in consideration i mean this is uh you know, it's such an interesting character, and it's a lot of fun to play. So I, I feel very privileged. You know? Awesome. Yeah, and we'll dive more into that topic too, and then also maybe we'll squeeze in some um, Agent Venom talk in the next episode as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Sweet man. Well, right, thank, thank you again. You. Yeah, you too, man. Take care.